How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be doing another EP Tech Tip, where I'm gonna be showing you how to polish the brass metal seat on a carburetor. So let's get right into it. So let's say you're in the process of cleaning and rebuilding your carburetor. This one here is off of a Honda engine, and one of those steps is going to be replacing the rubber-tipped needle valve that goes inside of the seat there. Now, sometimes what you'll find is when you've cleaned your carburetor and you've replaced the rubber tip needle valve, sometimes they won't seal. Now I have here a Stenz carburetor pressure tester. And for these Honda carburetors with the smaller fuel intakes, I have to use just a little piece of fuel line to go as work as a step down almost. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to pressure test the carburetor with the fuel valve here in the open position. And using a pressure tester, all that does is it kind of tells you the seal of the rubber tipped needle valve against the brass seat. Now, if you don't have one of these pressure testers, you can do one of two things. You can either bench test your carburetor, which is going to be basically fully reassembling the carburetor and putting it in the upright position and then hooking up a fuel line and seeing if it leaks on your bench. If you guys remember from previous videos, I had my engine test stand where I had just a small fuel tank with a fuel line and a shutoff valve, and that was built specifically to do what's known as a bench test on a carburetor. Uh, the second thing you can do is go ahead and fully reassemble this carburetor and then reinstall it onto your machine, hook up the fuel line, but if it leaks, you're going to have to spend all that time to uninstall it and then disassemble it once again. Now, like I said, this carburetor has been ultrasonically cleaned and a new rubber tip needle valve has been installed. And right now I'm going to use my pressure tester. It is hooked up and I'm going to start pumping up the air gauge here. And you're going to notice that we are leaking air and that leak is happening at the needle valve. So even though I have my little step down here, we're not leaking there, I can promise you that. It is leaking at the needle valve in between the rubber tip and the brass seat. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that today. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to note that there is one more thing you can do if you are using a carb pressure tester like I am here. You can use a little bit of well, three-in-one oil is what I use, but you could use a little bit of penetrating oil or even a dab of water and put that into the seat. And basically what that does is it wets the tip of the needle valve simulating fuel. And a lot of times I've seen that when I've gone ahead and pressure tested these carburetors with a dry needle valve, they don't seal up sometimes. So you can go ahead and put a little dab in there and then do your test again. In this case, that did not solve the issue. Now you may be wondering if this carburetor has been ultrasonically cleaned and that is a brand new rubber tipped needle valve, why wouldn't the carburetor pressure test? Why would it leak? The reason that could happen could be due to one of two things. Uh, the first thing that I see a lot is that sometimes those metal seats in there, they get some gunk built up inside of them and it gets too hard to the point where your ultrasonic cleaner or especially your carb cleaner just simply can't break it away. And that little bit of gunk will get in between the seat and the needle valve and will prevent a proper seal from happening. And the second thing is that over time, even though this is a rubber tipped needle valve and that is a brass metal seat, I've heard that there can be a little ring that develops onto the ID or the inside diameter of that seat there. So the hole that allows the fuel through. And what that can do is that little ring can prevent a new needle valve from sealing. Now, if that is in fact the case where there is a physical little buildup of material in that little seat there, I've seen other videos where guys have used drill bits. And essentially what you're doing is using the cutting edge of the drill bit to go ahead and remove that little burr or that little edge. So essentially you would just go into the seat and with very little pressure, you would just rotate that drill bit again, using the cutting edge of that to kind of deburr the inside of that seat. And while I've seen that work in other videos, I don't really recommend it because you are actually removing material, right? This is going to be a hardened drill bit and you're going to have a soft brass seat and ideally we're not trying to remove material, we're just trying to seal up the carburetor. So how do I do it? Well, in order to fix this, the first thing you're going to need is a Q-tip. But you may notice that the Q-tip is too large to fit inside of the seat there. 
So what we're going to do is pull off some of the fuzz from the other end of the Q-tip and we're going to use that end to go inside of the seat. That's gonna be the first step. So you just get it to the point where that Q-tip fits snugly inside of that brass seat. So once you have your Q-tip fit to size, the second thing you're going to need is a drill. Any drill will do and you're just going to attach the Q-tip inside of the chuck of the drill for now. The third thing you're going to need is a little bit of valve lapping compound, or here you can see it's called valve grinding compound. This is made by Permatex. Now this valve lapping compound is essentially just a very gritty paste. You guys can see a little bit of oil in there that's used as lubricant. Basically, you use this whenever you're doing a valve job. So if you just ground a fresh new angle on your valve, or you are cutting a new seat into the valve seat, you want to go ahead and seat the new freshly cut valve into the seat, and you use a little bit of this stuff. I've done it in previous videos, um, can get into more of that in its own video, but essentially what we're going to be using is just a tiny amount of this gritty material. So I'm just gonna go and take a little bit and put it on my finger here. And we're just going to be putting the smallest amount of valve lapping compound onto the tip of that Q-tip there. Now the next part of this should be pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna take your drill and we're going to be using the power of the drill to go ahead and spin the Q-tip and the valve lapping compound is going to polish or buff that seat inside of there. And I'm just applying the slightest amount of pressure here. Now, after about 10 or 20 seconds of that, you're gonna wanna stop, and you're gonna notice that the seat is now covered in valve lapping compound. So what we're gonna do now is blast that stuff away with a little bit of carb cleaner. So go ahead and spray the carb down. Make sure you get all that valve lapping compound out of there. Basically, you're just trying to get rid of any remaining valve lapping compound because we don't want it in there. And, you know, depending on how long you spend polishing the seat, you may notice that it is visibly shinier. And that's going to be a good thing because we're going to put this back together. We're going to test it out and we're going to see if the needle valve now seals up against that seat that has just been polished. So I have the carb back up on the vise once again, and just like before, the carb is sitting in the level position. The only difference here is that we now have a polished seat, and the pressure gauge is hooked up in the same way. You know, there's no trickery here on my channel. So I'm going to go ahead and pressurize this, and you just saw me give it one press there. That's all we really need. We're not trying to pressure test this over five PSI, because I've noticed that normally a carburetor doesn't seal over that. And we can see here that it appears we dropped ever so slightly. But you're gonna notice that it's nowhere near the leak that it was before, right? So that means that polishing the seat is working and it's increasing the seal in between the rubber tip needle valve and that brass seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish this seat for just a little bit more and then I'll bring you back and see if we can get this needle valve sealed up. So I've chosen to polish the seat with the carburetor in the vise and that'll just allow me to apply a little bit more downward pressure on this Q-tip here. So as they say, third time's the charm. I have the carb set back up again, everything's reassembled and I'm going to go ahead and pump this up I gave it two smaller ones there this time. And you can see that we are now holding at just under five PSI. So that's perfect. This carburetor is now ready to be reinstalled onto the engine. And I know that when I do go ahead and reinstall this carb, that it won't leak. No fuel will be coming out of the carburetor. There's not gonna be a chance that, you know, it could flood into the cylinder and dilute the oil in the bottom end of the engine. I've also shown that in multiple videos as well. So that's my method that I use to go ahead and fix a leaky needle valve. You know, when you have a clean carburetor and a brand new rubber tip needle valve, if your carb leaks, do not use the drill bit method as you could remove a little bit more material than you want to. So just go ahead and use some valve lapping compound and polish the seat instead. If you guys work on small engines for a living, you probably have some of this stuff laying around. Uh, it is fairly inexpensive, but if you don't have it and you don't wanna go out and buy 
a whole container of it just to you know polish one seat on one carburetor that's leaking after you've cleaned and rebuilt it you know you probably could go ahead and use the drill bit method but like i said if you are going to be using the drill bit method you know go by hand don't spin it very fast and don't apply too much pressure because you could end up removing more material than you wanted to so again that's why i prefer the drill bit q-tip and valve lap compound method well that's going to be it for today's ep tech tip like I said, I have used this method in the past and do prefer it over using the drill bit to go ahead and you know cut away some of that material. The valve lapping compound works excellent to polish the seat if you're using the drill bit and Q-tip method, and I haven't had any issues with it, and it seals the carbs up nicely. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.